name is Shannon McQuinney. I've been living here since I was hired to teach in 1999-2000 um, and have been practicing art since I graduated fairly consistently, but definitely since my 30s I've been taking it more seriously. Primarily a painter, mostly acrylic, um, sometimes acrylic with oil on top. I do do multimedia and watercolor and sometimes take a swing at sculpture. <laughs> and it happens mostly after work hours because I teach full time at the high school as the art teacher. I teach the whole art program at the high school and so I teach mul multimedia drawing and then move to painting and then ceramics. And next year it sounds like I'll be a photography teacher as well. So yeah, I'm always being challenged there. And it's amazing in our tiny community how much skill and talent and creativity the students have. We have a lot of creative, really supportive families in our communities. So always being on top of building skills and learning the technologies and jumping to learn what they want to learn is super important as a teacher. <laughs> My family was all very hands-on, so my grandpa and grandma McQuinney, he did leather tooling and she did oil-painted landscapes, so I got to kind of play around with that a bit. And my grandpa Anderson was just full-on hands-on, like would build a house, do gardening, macrame, macrame lamps, and redid chairs with macrame if they fell apart. He was just super handy. Um, and Grandma did watercolors and oils. My mom has like drawn and painted and done all sorts of creative things and now quilts a lot. And my dad is also an artist. I see myself somewhat as a visual storyteller and that I'm painting experiences and a lot of times the expressiveness of the wildlife that I encounter and feel like I'm trying to share that vitality of the wildlife, the local critters. Um, definitely not scared of color and using a lot of it. I've always really loved being near water and in nature and so I feel like the currents and movement of water and of breezes really influences my art. And for a while I fought kind of the caricature, linear quality of my art, but it just keeps coming back. When I look back at art from years and years ago, it all still has those like layered linear qualities in them with a somewhat caricature style. So it's just kind of embedded in how I make my work. Artistic play and challenging yourself and perseverance are key factors for myself and for my students. So always kind of pushing the envelope and trying to broaden the horizon so you don't get stuck in one style, I think is really important. Getting stuck in just like, this is what I do and this is all I'm gonna do, I think is really dangerous because it can stagnate the art. And I definitely put an emphasis on that with my students that they should always be trying to push and challenge and experiment with their own work but also accept like I have a student right now who can just like whip off like a sort of post-impressionist work with a landscape scene very very quickly and very easily so I feel like encouraging her but also encouraging her to challenge herself by trying things that are hard is really important. <laughs> When I'm not working here in the studio, a lot of times I am out on the water or near the water and taking photographs and watching the way the water distorts plants and rocks and different things, trees especially, like seeing them like moving in the water. And then when I start a painting, I don't draw the painting first. Like I have my base image that I'm working with most of the time. Sometimes I do something random like a mermaid. Um, but most of the time I have images that I've taken and they, I have that on my laptop that I work from, my tablet, but I start just with random colors. So I'll just like squirt a bunch of really bright colors onto the canvas and go nuts with it on the canvas and then slowly start to draw the image out. So I never know what my painting's going to look like when I'm working on it. It just kind of 
comes out as the progression happens with the colors and the line and the image coming out of those colors. The painting behind you is a commissioned piece, which is quite different for me. <laughs> and I started it really messy with purples and blues and really dark colors and sent it the initial painting to Lucia, who it's for, and she was like, what is happening? I don't understand this at all. I'm like, just wait for it. It'll come. <laughs> and start layering on the yellows and oranges and reds to draw out the image because the blacks and purples were the base for the image that came out. Yeah, the colors change as I work. I usually I go for more vibrancy and I do try to like draw out the animal, but they do tend to have almost a caricature quality. So I have learned to allow that. How the feathers lay their facial structures are still really important, but I do try to keep them looser in a more painterly style. <laughs> I think that it's always important to have your work get out there and Prass and Signe in our communities. That has really helped in helping me to get my work out and to actually be pushing me to challenge myself. We are fairly isolated, so getting my work out of the studio or showing it to people is important because otherwise it's just you in this bubble painting and you start to question like, why? For me, Painting's grounding and it is something, if I'm not doing it, I get pretty cranky and I didn't learn that for years, but definitely that is, it is a need to paint, but it also, I, I am nervous sometimes sharing my work, but it is really important to share my work and to have people enjoy it is always flattering and makes me happy. Um, when somebody like asks for a commissioned work, that's really flattering as well. And also challenging because with a commission piece, you have to actually be communicating and collaborating with the person that you're working with. And sometimes what their expectations are pushes you to do something that you wouldn't normally do with your work. I illustrated a book quite a few years ago and the the author would ask me, oh no, that's not quite what I had envisioned. Can you do that over again? Or can you change this? And that's something that I try to share with the students too, is that if you're doing something for somebody else, you have to be flexible enough to be willing to change a piece and listen to what the employer wants of you, which sometimes is challenging when you have a passion for how you're doing something. <laughs> The bear that's up there is actually a commission piece for a woman in Denmark. One of the really cool things was like, as I painted it, she was really excited about it, which is nice. I like to, when I'm doing a commission piece, get sometimes the person who's buying it's voice in the title. And so I said, this is what the piece is basically going to look like. Um, do you have any feelings about title for like how we met because she actually came to one of the Orange Door Gallery shows. She was on a trek for a month or so on her own and came in and I was painting a different bear, which I have a print of it here, that she fell in love with and wanted to buy that one and it sold like two days after she talked to me about it through Signe's gallery and so we we decided to do the commission piece. When she responded with Across the Waters, it almost like made me tear up because it was such a perfect title for the fact that she's been over in Denmark this whole time and I've been here. So the title is gonna be Across the Waters and it suits the painting as well as like the experience, which is really cool. I think the quote, you should paint what you know, is definitely something that I feel helps people to make stronger art, no matter what they're actually choosing to do in their art. So me being here and embedded in wildlife and nature um, definitely has influenced my art. I feel like if I was in the Okanagan, it may be similar, like the piece that, that quirky piece with the marmots and the pigeons is actually from an experience like in the Okanagan. Um, so there still would be that wildlife nature factor, but I feel like you'd probably have more landscape buildings, possibly people incorporated into the pieces.
when I was in art school, my art was entirely different and was framed with more of a contemporary focus and a more feminist focus, which wouldn't really, I don't feel like it fits here for some of the artworks that I created were maybe a little racy and pretty hardcore feminist. <laughs> so it seems like a whole other life for what I do now. <laughs> I really have admired Signe over the years, um, not just for her business, like gentle manner, but she's been super supportive and gentle and knowledgeable with the gallery and helping me to get my art out there. But also her art, I think is gorgeous. And when I'm out on the ocean on a sunny day, like I actually can see her paintings, the sparkle hitting the water. It's such a strong um, interpretation of water that she's done with those paintings that it really resonates with me. Marla definitely has been an influence and I feel like she's been, I mean, well I know she's been an influence for a lot of people in the community. Um, for her also her professionalism and seeing her vibrant art, lots of color. I, I know that a few people have compared us for our choice of imagery and color and just her strong voice I think, like her passion for what she does is really inspiring as well. I feel like my students have really inspired me um, over the years. Like we've, there's been so many that have come through the school and just like a term gobsmacked comes to mind. Like they just like ins really are inspiring. Like Yelmer is an amazing person and he came through the school and we were all like, you're going to be famous someday. And he'd be like, oh, whatever, you guys are crazy. But I'm like, no, seriously, like he's had mad skills even in, and just this boisterous personality that was amazing. Jovi um, Corlazzoli also, like he can do pretty much anything and was like just so passionate and dove into everything that he did. Um, his sister as well, like Sylvana, like, and her whole crew. I have like some right now too that are working to a high enough degree that they could be, and some, and some of them are doing work and selling it. So that amazes me because in high school I was not there. <laughs> teachers in college um, that were really big influences on me, um, not just as an artist, but as a teacher. We had this one teacher, Murray Johnson, who was my first year drawing teacher, who was super strict, but like what we learned from him and his passion for art has been so embedded in like everything that came after that, but we were kind of scared of him. If you came to class late, he'd yell at you. This is like first year college, right? You're an adult and he was so strict. You weren't allowed to use erasers, and which makes total sense to me now. But before I was like, what is this guy on about? But it made total, it makes total sense because you like draw something. I encounter it with students too, where you draw something, you erase it, and then you draw it and you pretty much drawing right over. Like students will ask me to fix something. They're like, this is terrible. Can you fix it? And I go and I'm like, say them. I just drew right over what you had before. <laughs> He's totally right. Um, I had this other teacher who was like he, super huge influence on so many of us because he was so much about artistic exploration and like pushing the envelope and trying new things and experimenting all the time to build your skills that he was like a huge influence on so many of us as well. Spending more time in the studio um, and potentially getting a show, getting more gallery representation. So far, I have work at Signe's Gallery and she has, I think, about 16 of my pieces, which is really amazing. <laughs> I also have work at Draw Gallery in Port which has been challenging because she picked some of us up just before COVID hit. And so she's been trying really hard to actually show our work, but it's been mostly online because of how things have gone. Um, but moving out, broadening that, but I have to be really careful with that because I am a very much full-time art teacher. And I think it's important as an art teacher to 
give the energy and focus and passion to the students. Thank <laughs> you.